Hello students. Uh, today we are going to continue from uh, where we have stopped in the previous video. Uh, if you remember in the previous video we have uh, covered some introduction parts on the applications of ArcMap where uh, we have uh, performed some uh, addition of uh, maps or just vector maps uh, onto ArcMap uh, so that we did some sort of uh, symbology and appearance changing and um, uh, of course I have also introduced you with the interface of uh, ArcMap where we have uh, those tools and uh, all aspects okay uh, menu bar, the toolbars, the working space, uh, the table of contents and uh, how we can manage the interface so that um, it's easy for you to access your data at the same time it's very easy for you to uh, do what you want to do with uh, optimized space in the interface uh, on, the, on our today's discussion um, i'm going to demonstrate for you uh, using um, our country's map uh, ethiopia's map uh, we are going to use uh, the regional map of Ethiopia so that we'll do some sort of uh, symbology analysis uh, and we'll try to recap what we have covered in the previous video and of course uh, by the end of this session uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to prepare an interactive map for a printout uh, it's important for you to remember this procedure because we are going to employ this throughout the sessions uh, the upcoming session so that uh, whenever you finish uh, one activity, it's important for you to visualize what you have uh, done on uh, appropriate and justified scale, uh, meaning um, you need to prepare an interactive map that actually shows uh, what your output is. Uh, therefore, uh, someone who is going to uh, refer on to the output, uh, therefore, uh, all important information about the title of the map, what it actually is uh, uh, included in the info in the output map, the scale, the legends, and everything. Therefore, meaning we need to prepare uh, an interactive map so that uh, your output uh, look like very pleasing. So uh, let's start. Um, in our today's discussion, uh, I'm going to add a file which is actually uh, have its own spatial reference. Um, as all you remember in the, our previous class uh, when you were in uh, campus, uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, the layer properties uh, of the given geographic objects that we are going to add onto uh, GIS platform. Therefore, they might be presented in terms of geographic coordinate system. Uh, in which we are going to use degree minute uh, second or degree decimal or radian measurement all sorts of uh, units are included in the geographic information system in the geographic coordinate system uh, the other one is this projected coordinate system uh, in many cases it's actually used for uh, the representation uh, of a certain geographic object in terms of metric units uh, especially in our engineering aspects uh, whenever you are interested to have a measurement in terms of metric unit or it's important for you to have a map that's actually prepared in terms of uh, projected coordinate system especially uh, when we go further in our discussion in the upcoming sessions uh, we are going to focus on maps that are actually prepared on projected coordinate system and of course, we are going to predefine the layer in terms of project coordinate system because in many cases, uh, water supply networks and uh, sewer lines and any other civil works, uh, which is going to be interpreted onto the ground, uh, are prepared in terms of UTM coordinate system or uh, project coordinate system where we are uh, going to use a metric unit. For, uh, but uh, if you are going to add a file to a GIS platform having its own predefined uh, geographic system uh, or coordinate systems therefore you can actually see how it's actually prepared or how is the representation of its 
geographic system or corner system uh, just by going to the properties and clicking on corner system therefore uh, the type of corner system in which the map is prepared will be displayed for you in this particular space okay so we'll see uh, how the coordinate system of the maps that we're going to add on to this platform uh, is actually prepared with. okay so i'm going to add a file okay uh, which is uh, a map of ethiopia regions a shape file okay therefore this is a shape file of ethiopia having all uh, uh, federal uh, regions of Ethiopia or all the regions which actually make up the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Um, by the way, uh, this exercise that I'm, going, uh, I'm demonstrating for you uh, is just the introduction part, uh, but uh, all the principles that we are going to employ here will hold true for our upcoming exercises in which we are going to practice on the engineering aspects especially on our field of studies as uh, water supply before uh, this is just to give you the heads up how we can apply some powerful tools of GIS onto vector map so that in the upcoming exercises uh, you are going to use these tools in order to present your output so that it's very easy for you to understand uh, uh, your outputs very easily and of course present your output for uh, some decision makers okay uh, first let's see uh, on what type of uh, coordinate system this map is actually prepared if you just want to check that we'll just right click on layers and go to properties and uh, there you have it it's actually prepared on to the projected coordinate system uh, with UTM universal transport Mercator uh on 37 nodes but actually here it's used uh, adding done uh, utf zone of 37 nodes as you remember uh, ethiopia the shape file of ethiopia is actually or ethiopia is located in the utm coordinate uh, area of 37 nodes uh, in the northern direction from the equator and the 37s uh, uh, in the 37 classification of the UTM uh, system but uh, when you uh, if you remember in the classroom some part of the eastern part of Ethiopia and the western part of uh, uh, the eastern part of Ethiopia and the uh, western part of Ethiopia some of them are within 36 degree north and 38 degrees north but uh, as we have discussed in the previous sessions if we consider the political boundary of Ethiopia as a geographic object, most of its uh, centroid or center of mass is located within 37 nodes. Therefore, in many cases, uh, we tend to use uh, the 37 nodes uh, for the case of Ethiopia. Okay, so uh, if you remember in the previous session that we have, what we have uh, done is in order to uh, change the appearance because here we have this single color representation like this one uh, we do have this the whole regions of Ethiopia having the same color but uh, in order to make this map very interesting and uh, pleasing for uh, some presentation or for any sort of output therefore we need to do some sort of analysis or we need to do some sort of appearance change using symbology so that uh, the map seems very interesting in order to do that first we need to check out the attributes okay because that attribute table is a very important information where all the information about the map that actually is displayed onto your screen is actually embedded in for here you can see the attribute table is we have this field id which actually in many cases starts from 0 to 10 meaning uh, if you consider 0 up to 10 we will have 11 items and of course uh, here we have the region names region code something like that uh, yeah we do have some sort of informations uh, therefore for example uh, if you need to change the appearance of the shape file according to region name 
okay make sure that you use this region name column in order to categorize your file or your uh, map so let's go to right click onto Ethiopia regions we'll go to properties then as you remember in the previous class the reason why we have this single color representation is because we have single symbol representation of the features but if you need to categorize the features in terms of the attributes therefore what you have to do is will click on categorize then click on the attributes that you need to categorize according to therefore we need this region name and we don't need these all values only we need the regions to be added on to the uh, onto the field therefore we we'll click on add values then all the regions are added here uh, of course you can change the color representation as per your interest you can change a lot of colors here you can change a lot of colors the colors that you want therefore we we'll click on apply then okay now we have this interesting uh, map of ethiopia therefore we do have all the regions with different colors then mm, the next step is what we need to do is for example if you need to label uh, this map according to the region name okay therefore for example uh, if we just click on label features therefore we have the labels here but you might need to do some sort of editing okay and of course directly clicking onto label feature like this one it's not good or it's not advisable because uh, it will show you some display onto here okay but it might not be according to your interest therefore you need to justify and uh, you need to go through some uh, standard procedures for the label therefore in order to do that just uh, we have also covered in this in the previous session so we'll go to properties uh, we'll go to labels and then uh, just wait for it sometimes uh, when you are working with gis it might get uh, your computer might get busy therefore you don't have to uh, rush just give it time for that so that the gis will respond accordingly otherwise if you just uh, uh, click or again and again therefore your computer might get busy and of course uh, all the system might crash in terms of gis therefore it might close therefore just wait whenever it actually shows you busy therefore it means your computer is working on it okay then we'll select region name then you can do a sort of edit for example you can change the font size okay for you can change the font size you can make it bold something like that therefore it's the same uh, you can of course change the color what type of color you want or uh, the labels and the very important thing is the placement properties we have discussed this in the previous session therefore it's better for you just to use try horizontal first zero straight and of course always keep the label within the polygon before we we'll click on okay then apply then okay now we'll click back to okay right click on Ethiopia regions we are just right clicking here then label features okay you seen this therefore for example on the uh, if you remember before uh, the name Gambella is written horizontally and of course it passes from this to the other boundaries therefore it actually surpasses therefore uh, to the other boundaries making it uh, some sort of level overlap therefore here we have uh, the display therefore here for example the Benchangu Kumus region it's not actually labeled here it's because the name is very long and it requires very but if you just zoom in therefore you can see so we can adjust some sort of uh, we can maybe for example we'll go to properties again and uh, okay, just wait it means it's working just give it time yeah then for example we can change the labels uh, the label the font size for example maybe let's make it 10 so just click on apply then okay now you have it okay and shark rumors it's actually presented here no therefore uh, we have all the labels here presented okay uh, yeah it's quite important quite interesting to see like this but uh, if you are going to prepare uh, if you are interested to prepare a printout of your uh, output 
okay, from the GIS that you have been working on. Therefore, uh, we need to switch windows here, or we need to switch between uh, the displays. Therefore, just see closely here where the mouse pointer is going. We are working on the data view here, the data view, meaning we are working on the raw data here, okay? Therefore, we are doing some sort of appearance changes, a lot of spatial analysis you might do on the working space. Therefore, it's not actually the printout area, okay? Therefore, what we need to do is, okay, we have to switch from data view to layout view, okay? From data view to layout view. For uh, maybe we have to just untick the labels. Therefore, we just switch from data view to layout view. Therefore, automatically it will take you the paper out or the, the paper layout of uh, how it looks on paper. Okay, it actually shows you uh, how your map will look like if you just print it on some sort of paper. Okay, but we didn't actually define the type and the size of paper size uh, that we are going to print here. But anyway, it actually shows you the layout view. The layout view. But uh, we need to do some sort of uh, adjustment so that your map will have uh, this uh, interesting appearance on the paper and of course it should, it should it's better for the map to be displayed proportionally according to the paper size. Therefore, here for example the map seems very small at the center and of course the printout area is very large therefore we need to do some sort of adjustment in order to do that uh, first we uh, will come back to the data view then right click then zoom to layer appropriately zoom to layer and uh, yeah let's go here now we have this appropriate uh, presentation of the map the center and of course you need to for example if you just you are not interested with this read this uh, frame then we we'll just right click on the frame, align, then align, distribute, fit to margin. Okay, we we'll just click on distribute, fit to margin. Therefore, now it's actually fitted to the margin. Therefore, we have this enough space for uh, the display. Okay, and of course, uh, if you are also interested, if you just feel this map still seems very small. You can just go back to add data view and right click again, then zoom to layer. Okay, then here you have it. Okay, now it's very interesting. Now the margins are okay, the map is actually fitted to the area. And whenever you just switch from data view to layout view, therefore a layout view toolbar appears here. Okay, which actually does something for the zoom in, zoom out, full extent, a lot of, you can just check it out. But it's better for you to do manually, like what I have uh, shown you here previously, so that your map will look like very interesting, like this one. So what is next? For example, if you just miss it like this one, just we can bring it uh, back to, uh, yeah, back to like this one. Zoom the whole page, okay? And if you feel uh, tilted somewhat, or if you feel the map might change, uh, the map might be changed in size again and again. Just check whether it's according to the full size. Meaning you have to check it on zoom to layer like this one, and return back to the layout view. Now we have the layout view. Now the very important thing is uh, for a map to be interactive, we need to we need to have title. Okay, title of the map to be somewhere on the top. Direction of the north arrow, uh, legend, scale of the map, and sometimes uh, prepared by whom. If you just want to have your name written on the map, you need to include all those information so that your map will look like. Uh, very interesting. So in order to do or in order to insert all the important parameters that you uh, need for an interactive map, we'll go to insert. It's in the insert menu where we can find all the important inputs for a given map in order to be printed out onto the uh, uh, paper output of your uh, 
exercise or your whatever project you have been working on therefore the first thing is let's just insert title okay for example i will just click on the title like ethiopian ethiopian origins ethiopian regions okay i'll just click on okay now ethiopian regions is added but uh, i have to change the font and the text therefore you just click on with double click Okay, whenever you want to change the font size and the page everything therefore click on like this one then you can yeah maybe the size for example you can just see the size here or maybe the text change symbol for example or let's just wait it's working Okay, it's working okay just give it time it will come okay maybe you can make it bold you can just click on the size maybe okay and of course apply uh, yeah you can of course increase the uh, height like this one for example make it five This gets very big. You can just make it four. Okay, you can just by watching here, you can adjust the numbers. Okay, therefore, now it seems okay. Okay, therefore, here you can drag it and put it somewhere like this. Ethiopia regions. Next, we'll insert the north arrow. For example, you can select a lot of fancy arrows here, but in many cases, I prefer the simple one, the simplest one, uh, like this one. But in some cases, it depends on your mode. Uh, some guys might be uh, interested by using this very fancy and complicated north arrows, but in my case, I prefer the simplest one. Therefore, uh, here it comes. Therefore, you can just resize it here size put it somewhere like this now we have the north arrow the next one is you need to insert what's called the scale scale is very important scale bar therefore in scale bar uh, you can select the type of display or the type of scale bar of your interest okay you might select the bar or some sort of uh, scaled lines like this therefore anyway just select one and go to properties you can just select what type of unit maybe in meters or in kilometers it's preferable therefore you can just click on apply then okay then you click on okay now we have the scale here scale here okay but it's very important for you just to display the scales in some uh, reasonable numbers okay for example here is this uh, uh, this scale shows you that for any measurement like this from zero to this one if you measure this this length this length on the map is equivalent to 416 kilometers on the ground that it's the scale, the scale is like this uh, therefore but it's better for you just to make sure this number is actually some uh, reasonable numbers therefore we have to make it some sort of uh, yeah, whole number like this one it's better for us to make it like probably 500 okay it's better it's much much better than 416 okay therefore uh, it's better for you to have this uh, some sounding scale so that uh, it will be interesting for anyone who actually prefers the map therefore we have actually inserted the scale okay now what remains is we need to insert the legend okay therefore by the way um, the legend that's going to be displayed here on the map is directly related to the type or the type of the attribute or the attributes that you actually use in order to categorize okay therefore uh, type of uh, um, 
attributes that we use for the classification. Therefore, let me just show you. We click on insert, we go to legend. Okay, therefore, legend is actually selected. Then you can just click on preview if you, uh, the legend is according to your interest. Therefore, yeah, it's okay. Then we click on finish. Therefore, you have the legend here. Okay, therefore, And just resize it according to your map area just to make sure everything is okay okay now we have a legend okay. okay you can just use the scroll onto your mouse so that you can have zoom in zoom out effect onto the the layout view therefore we have the title we have the north arrow, we have the legend, we have the scale. Now, what else you need? Might you might be interested to add something, for example, the, by whom the map is actually prepared. Just in order to do that, or in order to be to add any text on your map, therefore you can just click on insert, then click on text here, then double click on the text. Okay, then type the type of text, for example, prepared. By, for example, my name is Faro. Okay. Before I can just, by the way, this uh, uh, prepared by is actually as such important that uh, as those with legends and the scale. Therefore, uh, you don't have to make it very large. Therefore, uh, very simple and. Uh, just the text at the corner is enough. Therefore, so put it some text here. It might be any other text. It's just for an example. Therefore, so whenever you are interested to add a text, therefore this is the way how you can add a text onto your uh, map. Therefore, so now we have finished. Meaning we have all the important parameters that we need for a given particular map in order to print out. Therefore, so you can just click on file, then click on print. Okay. Therefore, the page setup is actually selected. Uh, if you are interested to print out using some A4, A3, A0, or any other paper size, you can select it. But in our case, I was interested to print out with A4 paper. It's a letter size, therefore it's okay. But if you are interested to prepare in for an A3, for you can just click on A3 and do the same procedure like what we have until now before it's okay and click on for example i need to print in terms of pdfs therefore uh, why we are going to prepare the map in terms of pdf therefore pdf is actually a stable file which you can open it or access it from different source of computer uh, the reason is um, in some cases uh, depending on the resolution of a computer uh, one file that you prepare on one computer might be distorted when you open it on another computer. Therefore, it's quite important to use some stable file format so that your document uh, will not be altered from one computer to another computer. Therefore, in many cases, if you are going to print out your file in some sort of uh, other computers with different printer, therefore, it's better for you to prepare your map in terms of PDF. Before, click on PDF, then click on OK. Now it's preparing some PDF file. It will give you an option where to save it. Uh, just give it time. Okay. Now it shows you uh, or tasks you where to save the file. I just select the file on the desktop. Okay, exercise one. For example, exercise one print let me just give it such a name then i click on save now it's preparing a pdf file let me check if it actually is okay okay then i'll go to desktop here i have the desktop file okay uh, yeah there you have it now we have a map of ethiopian regions 
legend scale to get by whom therefore it's okay it's, it's a very simple way uh, how to prepare an interactive map for a printout but make sure that all the things that you put on uh, printout actually make sense make sure that the, the scale is actually uh, a justified number make sure that the legends are put accordingly make sure that the map area okay is proportional to the paper size therefore uh, it's not uh, pleasing to see a very tiny 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 map or uh, geographic object on a very big paper size therefore make sure that everything is proportional uh, and of course uh, pleasant to observe and yeah that's how we can prepare a printout and, and of course you can just check uh, all the aspects here for example uh, you can just add some sort of neat line meaning uh, you can add some borders for example you can add border for the map like this one uh, you can change the background you can change some background okay therefore yeah you can do some sort of uh, Editing so that your your file or your output looks some uh, somewhat interesting. It's just up to you. Just explore uh, everything that is available here. It's very uh, user friendly procedure for you to exercise because already you have the background knowledge of uh, ArcMap. It's just in order to uh, brainstorm your understanding of the previous sessions. For uh, yeah, I thank you so much and. Uh, Please let me know if you find this video interesting and uh, in the upcoming sessions I will be demonstrating for you uh, advanced uh, GIS applications like spatial analysis and georeferencing and of course uh, we'll continue uh, uh, some digitization preparation of vector maps okay, and of course so forth therefore uh, yeah just stay tuned therefore I'll be uh, posting consecutive videos so that you can get familiar uh, with ArcMap again. Thank you and enjoy.